Hello my dears, as you have already seen it in the title, today's episode is included in my Makers and Culture in Austria project. I am delighted to have had the opportunity to recently meet an authentic artist and couturier to understand more about her work, passion and legacy. My guest today is Barbara Pessendorfer, a rare talent and creative force and at the same time one of the most delicate, humble and beautiful human beings that I have ever met. Her corset artworks are magical, simply out of the world, a mirror of her spirit. Her work, labeled under Royal Black Couture, is nationally and internationally highly regarded and I'm happy that I can bring you here a bit of Barbara's story and her art. I am wearing a headpiece that I created, Quid du Chine Perfume by Le Indemotable, and one of my favorite vintage silk skirts that I actually upcycled. Enjoy watching this episode that I filmed together with Eva, one of my video assistants at Schnittbogen, a Viennese location that hosts creatives and creative projects from the fashion field. I will show you more about this unique space and concept in a future episode. Kiss! So uh, we are at uh, Schnittbogen and uh, we are going to talk to Barbara. I already mentioned her in my introduction and I'm so happy that she accepted to uh, offer us uh, some information to meet us here. Everything looks gorgeous, stunning, absolutely creative and inspiring. And I'm going to start with the first question, Barbara. Yes, uh, <laughs> who wears corsets and um, let's say here in Vienna in particular because you are established here and on which uh, occasions? Um, well there are many different ways or occasions to wear corsets. I have specialized in um, outerwear, uh, in show pieces mostly. So um, I like to work with creative people, performers, musicians, photographers. Um, it's usually creative people, they maybe want to tell a story with the outfit or it should match a theme of their performance and I try to create something that fits their narrative and to complete the story they want to tell us. So they come on, uh, by the way the underground or uh, the metro <laughs> is going above above and below but here above so we apologize about the uh, sound and noise but uh, I find it really charming it's really special here uh, high ceilings uh, very historical as well uh, so to understand better uh, they come with their own concept and they have different uh, artistic uh, projects and uh, uh, it can be a lot of different approaches. Some people have a very clear idea or concept. They might have a theme and they tell me, can you please make something that fits the theme? Other people just say, can you make something that looks spectacular in the color red? Sometimes I have the um, concept and design, other times the clients uh, bring uh. ideas. What, uh, what I find fascinating is that uh, your work breaks out of the traditional uh, uh, type of corsetry here yeah. in Vienna. Vienna is very well uh, famous for the ball season and uh, you do it different. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a, a good way to put it. Um, 
I'm fascinated by uh, the historical side of corsetry because it's an old handcraft and I'm very passionate about all kinds of um, old traditional techniques and handcraft. But I also want to bring it to modern times and to do modern interpretations. Um, yeah, yeah, just um, do my own take on it instead of yes. sticking to what has been in the past. Yeah, and I feel there is a lot of um, history in terms of corsets. There are a lot of um, prejudices and misconceptions, like the corset was oppressive for women or they were restricted by it. And I want to break that narrative up and um, instead create something that is um, empowering the people who wear the uh, garments, that tells a story that makes people feel strong and beautiful. Yes, so, yes. yeah, it's a different take. Uh, yes, and I, I appreciate your, yeah, your innovative uh, take. Uh, and uh, yeah, so what type of uh, what types of uh, corsets do, do you create? Uh, types and uh, uh, can I say categories? Uh, yeah, um, that is also a really good question, I think, because corsets used to be um, underwear. They were not vis visible in the past. It was um, a garment meant to shape and support the body, but not being seen. And um, nowadays, it's more like. Um, a showpiece that is one on the outside um, and that is what I do as well. I want to create showpieces that are visible, not hidden underneath layers of other garments. And for me it's um, kind of like my canvas to tell stories and um, maybe, yeah, I would say I want to create wearable art and I want to tell stories with it instead of just dressing people. Yes. So that is you are one of the few uh, couture uh, corset makers uh, here in Vienna. Can you tell us uh, a bit more about uh, actually your background and uh, why corsets? And um, can you describe in big lines your uh, um, creative and technological process? Yeah, well, I try. <laughs> um, I come from a family of artisans, so I've always been around um, craft, I would say. My mother was a seamstress herself, and uh, my father was an engraver, so I grew up among people always doing stuff with their hands and making things, taking pride in making stuff themselves. And I guess that is where my fascination for handcraft comes from. Uh, Were you born here in Vienna? Or, uh, um, where? I was Austria? born here, but my parents are from Upper Austria and uh, most of my childhood I spent. Yeah, it's not really countryside, it's a bit outside of uh, Linz. Ah, Linz. But um, yeah, not super rural, but also not in the city. Yeah. And uh, yes, so please uh, tell us more uh, about your creative and uh, technological uh, process. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know that uh, it takes a long, long time to, yeah. to create a, yeah. a piece, a piece of art. And uh, where, where do you start uh, from? From the idea, from the concept, or you get inspired mm -hmm. by certain fabrics or parts of the corsets? That's all. That also um, is different from project to project. Um, when I, so I used to work for clients for um, seven to eight years and um, nowadays, nowadays I'm mostly teaching so my approach in working has changed a bit. When I uh, worked for clients I usually started with a sketch and discussing the ideas because I needed to um, bring across what I had in my mind and show the clients. They can't see what I have in my head. But if I make something for myself or for teaching purposes, I usually skip the sketching because it's not my favorite part. I prefer to start sewing and making right away. But um, yeah, so sketching would be one of the first things if I work for clients. Otherwise, I start with the pattern making and um, I have uh, learned to draft patterns flat on paper, so that is um, the other approach than uh, draping on the mannequin. Yes. 
and I feel it fits corset making quite well because corsetry is quite technical. Yes. You, you need a lot of measurements. Precise, yes. You need to be precise. Yes. Precise. And um, I find it easier to draft that flat on the paper with all the measurements and then do test pieces like mock-ups yes. and um, adjust it instead and starting on the dress form. And uh, if anyone would be interested, let's imagine now that a pandemic is uh, gone, is away, uh, where do they find you? I mean, uh, will you uh, show those dates on your website or how, how, how they reach you? Um, I used to have a page with uh, classes and dates on my website, but I have removed it uh, at the moment because I just don't know when the yes. class, when I can take it up again. I used to announce the dates on the website and people also could email me and um, ask to be put on the um, list waiting, list. waiting list. Um, yeah, so something like that, um, if I can take it up again. I guess that is the they, uh, they the will find everything on the website. On the website, yes. And uh, tell us please about your Patreon uh, yes. project. Um, so um, Patreon is a platform where artists um, can create for an audience of subscribers. Um, and I found it uh, to be a good substitute for uh, in-person classes because I can make learning resources available online for also for much lower cost than in-person classes of course so um, how i use patreon is i produce content for my subscribers which is um, tutorials and how to make patterns how to construct corsets mm. how to sew costumes how to decorate so it's from beginner to advanced and my subscribers um, receive these tutorials as PDF files. They can download it and then they can learn on their own from home at their own level, uh, skill level. And if they have questions, um, I do Q&A sessions on Patreon so they can ask me or they can write to me with follow-up questions. And it's kind of an easier way to teach more people, yes, especially in times like these. And yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I, I saw on your Instagram page that you recently had a project. Is it an ongoing project or is it uh, that? Uh, tell us more about it because it yes. looks so exciting. Thank you. Um, the Curves for Everybody project is uh, a project that I have done for my own heart and <laughs> passion because it's just really dear to my heart. and. Uh, it's about making corsets accessible for um, different body types, um, different ages, gender, sizes. Because what we see online is usually um, young models, skinny models. Um, it's, it's very much a stereotype yes. and um, corsetry, I believe, it's a garment that should be made bespoke anyways because it's all about perfect fit. So um, I think it's really important to show that not only one specific type of person or size or age or gender um, can wear the garment, but um, that everyone can um, get such a garment. And um, I want to teach with this project um, how to make that. I've written a tutorial series about how to draft patterns for different um, body types, different sizes, different figures, mm -hmm. uh, postures, and that was the thought behind it. But then I felt so inspired by my fitting models um, for this project that I decided to uh, do more with it. And that's why we came up with the idea of uh, doing a photo shoot and present all the samples I made for these tutorial books in a photo shoot and um, yeah, just show um, real results instead of just samples. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, to someone that hasn't tried yet a corset, what would you recommend to, to have as a first piece, as a first uh, corset? Mm, probably um, a little black underbust corset. I always say that's the equivalent to the little black dress. I will show you an um, example later. 
Um, and the best corsets are the easiest styles to wear in my opinion. So it's just like a white waist belt that accentuates the waist. And you can put it uh, on top of a blouse or a shirt or a dress. So it's really versatile. You can dress it up or down and you don't have to worry as much about fit. And the best corsets are the easiest style um, to find something that works. And it's also the most versatile. In my uh, when uh, I get so close to your work here, everything feels so tempting to touch, to try, <laughs> to have for myself. But I know that uh, you are not uh, selling uh, your uh, corsets. So if someone would love to have uh, one of your corsets uh, at the moment, or how, how is it? Uh, they cannot purchase uh, your beautiful work. Um, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not. So, so I used to work for clients and sell my creations for seven years. But unfortunately I had to um, stop because of uh, health problems. Sewing is tough on the hands and mm. I needed to come up with a different business model. So um, I changed my career to teaching. Um, but yeah, if someone wants to have a corset, there are um, very talented colleagues of mine who may, may be able to help you out. And what I do now is um, creating samples and work for studying purposes to learn myself, to improve my skills and then to pass on that knowledge to other people who would like to learn that craft. And, and uh, I can absolutely imagine that a course that takes hours and hours of work and um, yeah, it's a piece of art and then when we think of the financial part, yeah. uh, then if I may say openly it will get uh, extraordinarily expensive because your yeah. work, uh, working hours should be covered, should be paid and um, it, it is an absolutely yeah, couture item, yeah. couture piece. And, uh, yeah, that's that's something, to be honest, I always struggle with the, with the um, financial part because I feel I'm more like an artist and not so much a businesswoman. Yes, yes. And um, people are used to um, buying fast fashion these days, so um, a lot of people are just not aware what um, it really means to make something from scratch, to create a pattern, to As you said, it really takes hours. It can take hundreds of hours in some cases. And it's very difficult to charge um, by the hour if so much time goes into the garment. Because a lot of people, um, yeah, uh, to, to be honest, might not be able to afford it. And yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure they do have their best intentions to, yeah. to um, um, appreciate our work. But I know that uh, it's underestimated because myself, I, now I talk about uh, myself, I underestimate the, the hours before I start creating a piece, a product, a dress. I always underestimate the hours. And uh, at the end of the day, I say, oh, wow, it took much longer than I thought. So I should not expect this from anyone else. And yes, it's, uh, it's difficult. Uh, how much it should cost and then I often see people's faces fall oh, because disappointed. It, yeah, yes. it, it doesn't go together what they might be able to afford and what I feel I should charge yes. and then there's this discrepancy that makes it difficult so um, I prefer or it's easier with the business model I have now I can create my show pieces and the income is from teaching and writing and selling my tutorial books instead of trying to find someone who can really pay the hour that go into making the garment. Do you choose before the classes which corset design would go into the class or is it always uh, kind of the same? Um, Thanks. So um, on Patreon, um, I ask my subscribers uh -huh. what kind of topics they would be interested in, in. and there, there are a lot of uh, topics that are more advanced because it's difficult to find information on that. 
For example, I've written a series about corsets with cups, and that is a style that is very popular, but uh, hard to find information. And yeah, then for uh, quite a while, I made a lot of corsets with cups because I needed samples for those books. And um, yeah, that, that, that is kind of how I choose my um, projects. Uh, and do you also advise your students where to get the parts, the, the courses yes. parts? Yes, yes, of course. Because uh, everything is so specific. Uh, yeah. I'm sure it's not easy to um, find them. It's, it has uh, been a bit difficult lately because I used to source a lot of materials in England because um, England, England and France are the countries where the corset making trade is or originated. Yes. And a lot of materials um, I sourced from there. So with Brexit, everything got very complicated and very expensive. But um, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these materials are difficult to find in uh, regular fabric shops. So um, I source a lot of it online. Um, there are a few specialist shops here in Vienna. If I really need something, uh, for example, Yes, the first they history. do have the corset bones and yes. busks, but only very limited stock in terms of length or oh, um, sizes. Okay. So I go there if I need something urgently, but yes. uh, for most cases I order online. Yes. So uh, now I look so much forward uh, seeing having a close-up uh, of your pieces, mm -hmm. and uh, I thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, this interview and your story and uh, I hope uh, to meet you again maybe in one of your classes because I'm interested oh, that would be nice. <laughs> I'm very interested and uh, yeah you, you, your work is amazing is uh, wow it's absolutely wow <laughs> and uh, yeah let's uh, let's have a closer look now I see you have the pieces here I see one behind you yes and, uh, us more information. Yeah. Um, so Barbara, okay. please uh, <laughs> tell us more about this beautiful, beautiful corset. Uh, yeah, with pleasure. So um, both of these pieces here are part of a um, collection called Time Traveler. And the idea behind it is um, to use historical patterns from the past and um, interpret them in a modern way. So for example, the one on the dress from here, it's a pattern from 1900. Wow. And um, I used um, modern materials to make it look like a contemporary piece, but um, it's still a time traveling adventure from the past with the pattern to uh, all kinds of techniques and materials from old to new. And then the look and style that I presented in photo shoots was a very modern, contemporary approach. And uh, I see the mannequin. Uh, yeah. is, is it a vintage piece, a uh, vintage mannequin? Because it's... It's uh, fashioned it's after fashion. a vintage one. It has the typical um, silhouette and shape with the very small waist, but yes. it's a modern reproduction. Ah, it's a modern... Yeah. Okay, and coming back to the corset, uh, the closure is in front. Yes. just makes it easier to put corsets on and off because you don't have to undo the lacing in the back completely. You just open it a bit, then you do the hooks and eyes and then you lace it down to the... Ah, so the lace is also in the back? Yes. Oh. <laughs> there is still uh, lacing in the back. That is where you um, can make it wider or smaller, oh. but the front is to get in and out easily. Wow. Yeah. So this one is also from the Time Traveler collection and it's quite special because it's um, an 18th century pattern that I have used and I also used 18th century techniques so a lot of this is sewn by hand and um, the materials inside are um, traditional so there's a piece of um, cardboard in it that is reinforced with linen and then there is a special front busk in it, which I find really interesting. So this is um, a piece of wood that um, 
is meant to reinforce the front and in historical garments it was meant to be a love token so um, men used to gift these front busks to um, their beloved ones they were often engraved or uh, with poems written on them and they always wore it close to their hearts Heart. like that so it has a um, functional purpose of reinforcing the front but it also has a very personal connection and details like that um, make it really interesting special. and special to me. Yeah. So all of these lining pieces, they're all hand sewn and the eyelets are hand sewn. So just, yeah, I think this one took 180 hours. To 180 make. hours? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a labor of love, yes. but uh, I enjoyed every second. My hands didn't so much. I was bleeding and screaming because it's tough on the hands but yeah no they, they are all museum uh, pieces yeah it's, it's just such a beautiful craft and I'm very grateful art and craft yes there is a bit of work in progress so uh, this is a sample that I'm making for my next tutorial. I'm currently writing about bodysuits, yes. like corsets that go down into the panty shape. And I tried different patterns and now I'm making a sample so I can put uh, pictures on the cover and I can document every step because that is how I teach people in my uh, tutorials. And yeah, that is the pattern that I made for that panty suit. Wow. <laughs> it's lots of small pieces. It's small, yes. Yeah, very narrow pieces. So stripes of... Uh, uh, yeah, straight pieces. pieces of fabric that are smaller at the waist and then they get a bit wider towards the top and bottom again. Uh, do you have a fitting model or uh, you um, try them on your mannequins? Well, <laughs> to be honest, in most cases I am my own fitting model because I'm the only person uh, that I have access to 24-7. And that also was one of the reasons why I started my Curves for Everybody project because I realized that if I always show the same fitting model, which is myself in my tutorials, people again get the idea one body type yes. and um, if it's possible if the pandemic allows me I try to find other fitting models um, I invite other people to um, try on my garments but yeah uh, I feel I have a lot of work to do on that level and hopefully it will get a bit easier during the next month to do that yes. because it's never the same to put on a dress front and putting it on a real body. Somebody yeah. breathing, yes. Yeah, and corsets often are meant to shape the body, um, so that's something you can't test on a dress form because it doesn't mold Move. and shape, yes. it's yes. solid. Yes. So um, a real body is much better than a dress form. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we have this one. <laughs> I get goosebumps. <laughs> wow. That one is um, inspired by insects, uh, butterflies to be more precise, because I'm fascinated by the textures, the scales, the um, skin and, and wings. And um, yeah, I wanted to incorporate the wing shape of butterflies, but also the scaly look of their bodies. And that is what is behind this design, yes. I guess. <laughs> and the back, uh... back has got wow. the lacing, so this is why you um, can make it a bit wider or smaller. Crazy. Yeah, and here in the front is the bus again to get in and out easily. <laughs> That really uh, your babies. 
Which yeah, means, kind of. You yes. have to hold them like yes, this. Oh, so you really yes, yes. Like, um, and all the love, yeah. all the love that you put Yeah, in. they are levels of love. Yes. Mm, what else have we got here? Uh, maybe I'll show you these now because you asked what I would recommend for uh, people who want uh, to get a corset for the first time. So these are both very um, simple black underbust corsets. And um, this is also what uh, I make with people in my beginner's wow. classes. So it's just like a belt that you can put um, <laughs> over, let's say, a blouse, a shirt, a dress. And um, it's an accent, but it's not um, very intense, like a couture piece with lots of stuff going on. So it's much more toned down and uh, subtle and elegant. Here I have another one, which is um, in plain black satin. So even more classical than the other one. Again with the front bask to make it easier to put it on and off. And uh, uh, this corset is a bit higher. Yeah, that is um, a shorter one. It also depends. It, uh, some people have a short torso, others have a yes. longer torso. And then, of course, you can get different styles. Some people prefer just a narrow belt. Other want something that um, covers a bit more of the hips. So any style is possible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you so more. But yes, I would love. Uh, I see a piece here. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is another time traveler one. Another historical pattern. This is um, based on an antique riding corset from about um, 70, 80. And um, I worked on this pattern because I had to make historical corsets for a film. And this was one of the patterns I developed. So um, it's a riding corset because it's very high cut in the hips. Yes. That means you can uh, sit on the horse and move your legs a bit higher than um, you could with a corset that goes very low down. And also these inserts um, are a bit more elastic, so you just have more room for movement. And um, that's why it's uh, a typical riding corset. Maybe I can also point out, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but here are these special stitches, which is a detail that I really like. That is something um, typical in historical corsets. These little stitches here, black on black, they keep the bones in place. Thank you for having us here, for giving us so many details and information about your beautiful profession, your beautiful work, your label. Ah, uh, the last question. Yeah. Uh, where does a, a black couture comes from? Uh, um, yeah, my, my uh, label, Royal, Royal Black Couture. Um, the background is, um, I. As a teenager, I was part uh, of the Gothic subculture. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Uh, people just dressing in black with very wild hair and um, big crazy shoes. So it was a youth subculture. Uh, and part of the style was to wear corsets. Oh. But I couldn't afford to buy them. So I thought, yeah, probably I should just uh, make my own. My mom is a... Uh, seamstress and she, she showed me a bit how to uh, yeah how to make that and um, yeah everyone in this subculture was dressed in black and that kind of has stuck with me I mean, uh, and I made yeah. my nails for you today okay, <laughs> yes. so that is where the black, black comes from and the royal is because I want um, to really um, yeah, um, raise awareness about the craftsmanship, the precision, that is a very luxurious thing to take such um, care and time into creating things. And that is, yeah, it's a luxury item. So that is kind of the two sides behind the name. <laughs> having me on your
your channel. It has been a pleasure to show you around a bit. And I hope that your audience will enjoy it as well. I'm sure they did uh, enjoy this episode. Uh, we'll be back uh, if uh, you'll invite us uh, next time. And as I mentioned earlier, I would love to take uh, one of your classes. Ah, it will be my uh, pleasure. And yeah, we'll see each other very soon again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>